you're not a Californian. You're you're from New Jersey, correct? I grew up in New Jersey. Yeah. And you're yeah. from a uh, Irish Catholic household, correct? Well, yeah. I yeah, I didn't grow up with any sense of being Irish or Catholic. Catholic. I was Catholic. Yeah. I guess, but but not I, I never went to Catholic school. Yeah. I always went to public school. And so I had to go to Sunday school where I didn't, you know, I paid zero attention. And so yeah, but um it's funny. It's like as I became an adult, I would notice things uh, and I'd be like, oh, I'm Irish. Like personality traits, you oh. know, like <laughs> being paranoid <laughs> paranoid right. or 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 never forgetting, you know, if someone crosses you like that. Yeah. Like yeah. I'd see this in other people and I'm just like, oh, okay. Yeah. Or and like abs possibly drinking. Abs <laughs> or <laughs> and abscesses of rage that even you didn't know were there that all of a sudden come out. <laughs> Like, oh, yeah. I hit a pocket here and I'm angry about something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, but I, I I just, it was like a very white suburb of New Jersey. And um, and you, so it was very generic. Like, I thought everyone was Catholic and Jewish. That's the makeup of the neighborhood I grew up in. Yeah. And I thought I'd never met a wasp. I think there was a guy who was a Methodist in high school. And I, I thought he was like a persecuted minority. <laughs> I a unicorn. I just thought everyone was Catholic or Jewish. Yeah. So that was it. And yeah. you have two sisters, right? Is that right? I have two older sisters. Yeah. So I was the baby. You're the baby. And yeah. were you treated as such? I was totally. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, I like when I, we finally were going to have a child. I wanted a girl. Cause I, I felt like raised by women. Yeah. Cause my father really wasn't around. So it was mostly my mother and my two sisters and that's what I was used to, and I never had a brother, so uh, I just assumed I always more comfortable around the female, yeah, gender, yeah, yeah, than the male. But um, yeah, I mean, I had, I mean, I I've told you before, I had a crazy upbringing. Yes, I mean, every everyone that's had a crazy, but upbringing. no, but yours is, I mean, just just throw out a few of the details. I mean, I don't, um, you know. Show enough of my penis to win the longest penis. <laughs> the, what? The Milton Berle. The, that old Milton Berle joke. Oh, You've heard that. oh, oh right, right. Right? That's right, it. right. Yeah. Just take out yeah. enough to win. Yeah. Just just enough to win. Yeah, yeah. Um, no. Uh well, I just, you know, um there my mother had something called uh dissociative identity. Um which used to be called multiple personality disorder. Mm. They changed the name for some reason, I, I guess. Well, isn't it because the multiple personality is kind of like not entirely apt that it's like, it's not necessarily. I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. Like I remember seeing that show, the United States of Tara. Do you remember that? Yeah. Show? Or Sybil. Where, Sybil was the first one. Sybil was the first yeah. one, but then the United States of Tara tried to make it like, like the husband, like they started buying outfits for her different characters, mm -hmm. the wife's characters. And I was just like, Oh, that's not I, how oh it works. Yeah. I would. Yeah. It's no, no one's hanging around for fun time. Yeah. There are no fun times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we didn't know that when we were little, we just knew that. Um, I mean, in hindsight, it's like, Oh yeah, those were different personalities, but she would just set off on this rage at my father that would always culminate in, in violence. So you knew it was coming and she had like, she'd start grabbing butcher knives mm. and chasing uh, like it literally, I, I used, I, I you felt like you were in a cartoon cause it was, you know, a house where the dining rooms connected to the kitchen, which is connected to the hallway to the living room, to the dining room. And we'd literally be running around in a circle, in a circle. with her ch chasing you. And then you're like, should I, should I cut back the other way? Or, you know, it, I mean, it was, it was terrible. We were kids. So it was terrible. Yeah. Yeah. And then she'd turn us against our father because he was an alcoholic. So she's like, I act this way because, because your father, the way your father behaves and you know, if he would only act normal and stop drinking, I wouldn't act this way. Mm. And, you know, we were like, I was 10 years old. You 
she brainwashed us basically yeah my sisters and i and we all just believed her and then she'd turn us against him so we, then our job was like if she got mad at him we'd have to kick him out of the house and wire the doors shut so he couldn't get back in oh my so god so that yeah and then he'd go sleep in a flop house somewhere um and he had a big power he was the director of research for a pharmaceutical company wow and he was the mayor of our, our town what yeah i didn't know that which, yeah it's like a part-time job yeah it's like a small town so um you know uh he, he's supposed to like you know supposed to be in like the memorial day parade the next day and he's sleeping out in the car in the driveway because he got kicked out of the house wow. and it, yeah yeah so. well did the did the police have to get called from time to time or uh yeah the police came sometimes because i would met you like oh i gotta go out to the mayor's house again you know yeah no it was um yeah but you know i was brought up that you didn't talk about it so i never told anyone about any of this stuff till i was like i li- i ended up living at home taking care of her till i was 26 oh my god yeah wow no it was bad i mean i think about because i y- y- i lived through you know like a there was a period of major dysfunction and violence in my childhood but it was uh-huh. not you know it was like within a certain set of t- amount of time right but what i think back on is just and something that I've thought about, you know, when you hear about kids living in a situation like that or just in a situation with an unreliable parent who can explode. Uh, right. Just the sense of never, never being able to be relaxed, to always, yes. always feel uptight going into the place where you're supposed to feel most secure and most safe. And that's got to, you know. I mean, did you feel that or was it like times where you felt, you know, you're living on eggshells because you didn't know when this person might go crazy all the time, yeah, all, all the time. And, and, uh, we were all like that and it, it's, and it was hard to predict what would trigger. Um, it was literally like setting a uh, lighting a fuse, a long, really long fuse. And you knew when it was lit, uh, and you, it was you could never really predict when it was lit. And then you knew it was just going to build and build and the tension of the building to when the violence started. I mean, there were times I, we would like it, things would erupt and it would be close to bedtime. And then you'd go up and try to go to sleep. And I would literally push furniture against the door so I could sleep. Cause I knew like at 1 a.m. she was going to come up, you know, with a, a knife or she'd go to the garage and get like a pitchfork or something. I mean, really dramatic or an ax. Like once my sisters and I were locked in the upstairs bathroom and she was chopping, she was doing the shining. She was chopping through wow. the door and we were, we we're, we're, I was looking out the window, like trying to figure out how, how badly we'd get hurt if, you know, we had to jump. But, um, there, there is one. There's one time I finally, uh, uh, kind of. Uh, this is years later. I mean, that's that's when we were young teens. But like when I was, um, I was living uh, just with her, and I must have been twenty three or twenty four, and go. I was. It was starting to really screw with my head, and I. There was one night where I was just like, you know what? That is it. And I, I just had it. And I went downstairs to the garage and I got, I got a chainsaw. I came up to the room, the TV room where she's sitting. I started the chainsaw. And I was just like screaming like, you like it? How do you like it? You know? And I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fucking kill you. I'm going to kill you. And she just looked at me and laughed. And I was, I, I was just like, wow, she's, she's a good super villain. Wow. She's impressive. And. I, I'll, I'll, I mean, it's hard. I, it helps me to say it out loud, but I, oh my, I was on the edge of killing her wow. and I've never, I, uh, I was very close and, um, never before or since obviously, but I, uh, turned my chainsaw off and put it downstairs, but I, I had to pull myself back from it and that, you know, that it, what it, 
makes me think like sometimes I'll hear about teenagers who are in an abusive family and they they kill their uh father-in-law or something like that mm-hmm. and I always it upsets me so much because from my own experience I understand that when you're in that nuclear family you don't know there you don't know you'll ever be able to just escape from it it seems so obvious I mean yeah looking obviously but it seems like there's no way out like it's just this is it when you're in it yeah, and yeah. you're young you and your parents have always been dominating like that you don't see a way out yeah and well i think also too you you're living in a perpetual fight or flight state right and there's no there's no you know that right. there's no room for conceptualizing like you can't in the middle of a fight or flight state think what will my life be like in two years you know right. you're, oh, just, no. you're just you're no. just thinking about now now yeah. I'm either going to die or I'm not going to die or right. now, you know, like just, or, and not even so much die, just the world's right. going to end. You're going to end the, everything. Right. And I just don't think that there's any room for you to think in, in theoretical terms about the future. You just are in the now and that's, yeah. what, and that's, you're trapped there by these fucking crazy you, people. Yeah. Yes. By the way, I want to say I'm, I'm really good with a chainsaw and need, uh, <laughs> right. you know, brush cleared or sure. I do the job, right. uh, clean up and leave. They don't have to worry right. about any. And any when it comes pers- to chainsaw, you can be a man of action, not just talk. <laughs> right. You right. Exactly. Yeah. My, my mother did call the police on me once um, around this time, believe it or not. Cause I, I, you know, I went to law school and I was studying for the bar exam and um my girlfriend called up and my mother got on the phone and started calling her a whore. Mm. So I got upset and um, I kind of yelled at her and threw her up against the refrigerator and she, Oh, well she grabbed a butcher knife. So I, I knocked the knife out and pushed her against the refrigerator and she went into to her bedroom and called the cops and said, I was trying to kill her. So it was the night before the bar exam, and I had a lot of studying left to do. And oh, my God. six, <laughs> the entire it's making town's me poli- dizzy. <laughs> All these oh police cars God. showed up, and I'm just like, oh gosh, this is going to cut into my study time. Like I, I literally was just recalibrating. Um, you know, when am I gonna when am I gonna finish studying torts if I have to deal with these cops? And you know, they all surround it. Like I came out to the the front <laughs> port. I mean, I'm it's. I knew it was funny. I, I, and, but they all surrounded me. They're like, oh, don't, don't move, don't move, you know. And I, I'm like, okay, let's, let's talk. Yeah, but you don't know. they know? I mean, haven't these cops been to this house before and they know? Um, no, you know what? No, no one, like the last time cops were there before that was like when I was seven or eight. Oh, oh, really oh, oh I yeah. See. So, no, no, uh, we had all been. Um, we'd been left alone. Like our, none of, no one in my family reached out to help us. Um, everyone was, was your terrified dad of, gone. Your dad gone at this he point. He died when I was 19. Yeah. Oh, okay. He, uh, and that was crazy too. Cause he died of emphysema and the last years of his life, he was on, um, those giant oxygen tanks. Mm-hmm. And, um, he ended up rooming with me in my room, but because, we had been kind of brainwashed against him. I didn't talk to him for the two, the two years oh we were. God. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, yeah, but I would change his, you know, oxygen tanks for him. But I was, I literally thought he was the enemy and I wasn't allowed to talk to him. Wow. And then when he died, my sisters and I, this is how brainwashed we were. We thought my mother would be fine because he was dead. And so we were excited. We were happy. And, you know, of course, then instead of him being the main focus, we became the main focus oh. of all our craziness. And um, was there a revisionist history that he was a saint after he died, that kind of thing? Or or was he still a bad Oh, by, uh, by the children? By your children? mom, by your mom. Oh, no, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. no, no. She, but then she just turned on us and, and, you know, would, you know, she told us we could never leave. We could never move out. We had to, we owed it to her to make her, you know, she's a, 
upset, but we're, it's all our fault and we're not doing our responsibilities around the house, blah, blah, blah. And then like, if you, you know, after a night of her being crazy and trying to kill you, like if you, she'd be like, you seem upset today. What, what's wrong? Cause she would be kind of, she'd be a different person. She'd forget. She'd be like, what, what's, yeah. what's, what, you know, what, what's bothering you? And I was like, well, <laughs> you, you know, chased us around with a, a knife you ba 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 da 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 and you tell her everything and she'd be like i don't know what you're talking about like she'd literally say i don't i don't know what you're talking and then two hours later she'd be like you know i thought about what you said and you just made that stuff up to get out of your responsibilities here and and then she'd build up from there and get crazy again so so you never got a a, a moment you, there was zero satisfaction there yeah. was never even like i'm sorry you know what i'm sorry for what it, it was you started to wonder whether you were hallucinating or not wow. it's just crazy yeah it was crazy it was crazy now why and i mean and this is something because i've known i mean i did i knew and you've talked before about these similar incidents um, and there are no repeats at this, <laughs> like she really, she had new programming all the time. And, uh, but I'm, how do you come out of that as normal as you are? How do you come out of that as kind of an even keeled, like you're a, well, a wonder, I mean, from what I can see, you're a wonderful father. You're a wonderful husband. You were great to work with. You're a, a, a very much of like. You're just a very even, kind, thoughtful person, and you have every reason in the world to be a monster. I well, I I think when I was little, I was like the peacekeeper in the house, and yeah. so, you know, I try to make my mother laugh. You know that old, old thing where you right, know, I, right. I, but but I think when she wasn't having these episodes, she was a very loving mother. So you know, I I, I I'm, I'm I'm telling you the dramatic stuff. But I when know. she wasn't like that. She was. I think a really smart, funny, uh, loving mother. So I, I think that's why um, I, I, I felt kind of normal. Uh, I, I, and, and my sisters too. I mean, we're super tight now because we went through this together. So. Yeah. But um, did you all cope with it? Did your sisters cope with it? Okay. Yeah, too? I think we all. I think we all did. That's I mean, incredible. I mean, I never told anyone about this till I was till I I was like twenty four years old, and I thought I was going to get struck by lightning because it had been drummed into me you never talk about what happens in your home which is another irish thing yeah uh but um uh yeah but you know then i started going to therapy and that that helped but, yeah and and stopped any relationship with my mother like i'd invite her to her wedding and you know we just had because she was just really bad you know yeah she was i at the time i considered her to be evil i mean but you know obviously it's it's severe mental illness but, yeah did you ever but, get a did yeah. you ever get a sense from her that she was aware that she was sick no and um years and years later uh i guess around 10 years ago she was living alone and um you know i was just it always ate at me and i was like i'm gonna get a call that she's been dead for a month and you know cats have broken into the house to eat her and all that stuff. And, and, and it, and it's going to end horribly and I'm going to feel guilty, even though I shouldn't feel guilty. Um, oh, well, but then she hurt her back in the house and my sisters, um, got her to an emergency room. And while they were treating her back, they were like going to the doc. Cause, cause we used to try to talk her into going to get mental to please, please go see a doctor. And she was like, there's nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. There's nothing wrong with me. You're making all this stuff up. None of this is true. Da, 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 da. It's all you three children are the problem now that your father's dead and blah, 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 blah. So they finally get her to a hospital and she's admitted for her, her injured back. And they're like, please, please, I don't know if they tipped them or what they did. They're like, please give her a psychiatric exam. And they, they they locked her up for two days and gave her all these tests and they said she had a very rare uh, form where she's never truly never understands that there's something wrong with her. Wow! And they put her on all these medicines and they worked her the last 
two years of her life, she was just the the good mother the whole time. Wow. And I would talk to her on the phone and have a great conversation with her. And I would hang up and I would literally be stunned for five minutes after each phone call in total. I just couldn't believe. And, you know, when she uh, passed away, I, I felt like um, it was a miracle that I was able to have and end things on a very positive note. Mm. That was that was a uh, something I I never saw that coming. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that I did not see that coming. So did you so. live with her through college when you went to college? Did you yeah, stay at home? Yeah, uh, cuz I commuted to Newark. <laughs> I drove down to Rutgers in Newark every okay. day and and then I commuted to law school 3 years and I didn't want to go to law school. My she was like you're going to law school. I was like okay. And, you know, she like filled out the applications and she got me into some good schools and <laughs> <laughs> she was a pretty great mom. She got me into law school. Yeah. I never wanted to be a lawyer. And then I was like in law school that I was such a, I didn't know I could quit. <laughs> like I always wanted, ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to do something with comedy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, at the time I was like, oh, I'd love to do stand up, try stand up comedy. And I'm like, well, I'm in law school. Like. I don't know. I didn't know I could quit. So I went through law school and then I was. And became a I, lawyer. I was a trial lawyer in yeah. Manhattan for three years. Yeah. So I, I that's when I mo finally moved out. Um, Cause you know, I, I, it just, but yes, I lived home with her for seven years of college. Wow. 